Hello and welcome to the Fishing Guide Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Weekman. Of course, uh, I'm pretty excited because we're uh, here with three very professional, well-known catfishmen. And uh, we're getting ready to go out fishing tomorrow. And I'm going to get a little tidbit on what we're going to do tomorrow. And uh, so uh, Dustin, Jay, and Joey uh, are all part of this uh, group of anglers that I'm going out with. Uh, so we'll just start with it right away. Uh, tell us, Dustin, tell us a little bit about yourself, and, uh, and then we'll go on to your uh, partner. I'm uh, Dustin Goodwin from Columbus, Mississippi. Uh, really enjoy catfish, especially for flatheads. That's, Is that what you specialize in then? That's, what we, that's yep. what we target most of the time. We target depending on where we fish at, but we definitely target flatheads. And, and Jay, you're next. Uh, Jay Gallup from Caledonia, Mississippi. Uh, sort of the same thing. It's like catching catfish. We usually try to target flatheads when I can. I've had the opportunity to fish with both of these guys. like some of the right. greatest fishermen I've ever been on the boat with. And Joey, you're last, but not least, that's, you know. That's right. I like being over here. Yeah. Uh, Joey Pounders from Caledonia, Mississippi. Uh, we uh, we come up on the Tom Bigby River, and it's uh, it's tough to fish that river uh, a lot of times. So you got to get the best bait. And uh, if you're going to win a tournament, it seems like you got to target flathead. So it's it's more of like an adapt or die kind of uh, aspect. Right. When we're fishing our local river, so that's why we try to target them when we go out of town. It seems like everybody else has a hard time yeah. catching them, and so right. that's that's our our angle most times when you see us at tournaments. Okay, so tell us uh, for the people that don't know, tell us uh, tell us about catfish. There's a couple of species. Tell them tell them about that. I mean, you have flatheads, blues, yep. channels. Um, Is there a yeah. way of telling them apart? Uh, the color of them. Yeah. I mean, there's a bite. Yeah. The, I, think you, I mean, you just, they've, all, they've both got their characteristics about them. Right. Um, another thing about us catching the flatheads, to me, they're a lot more fun to catch. They tend to be a little bit slower, but a lot more strong. Uh-huh. Blue cats, to, they tend to be... They fight, they fight pretty hard right off the bat, but they tend to give up just a little bit, but not as long-winded. Like a flathead, you're going to have to fight him right. all the way to the boat. Really? Uh, you may have even had to fight him twice. A lot of times you get him halfway there, he'll change his mind. You, he's going back to where he came from. So uh, um, say like um, a channel cat or a blue or a flathead, what do they like to eat? They, they like different, they like can, different you, stuff? You can catch them on anything. When you're trying to target them, yeah, target them. When you're trying to target them, most of the time we we try to catch shad. Right. Most of the time use live bait. Uh huh. Um, use around six, seven inch shad. Is that cut bait? Live no, bait. You put them on hold, hook them through the top of the fin and the back toward toward the back of their tail. Oh, really? Get in that top meaty portion of the shad. Uh huh. Where you don't kill them, you get too low, you get in their sort of their gut pocket. They right. tend, tend to bleed out and die a lot quicker. If you can hook them just right, they stay on there a pretty good little while. What kind of hooks are you using to catch these big fish? Uh, I've been using the uh, eight out uh, Daiichi's uh -huh. hooks. We've got the offset in them. Um, I usually get them with the offset in them, and I tend to put a little bit more offset in them when I get them. Right. Uh, just to, it seems to expose the barb just a little bit more. Right. You guys use the same hooks then? Uh yeah. Yeah, it, it varies. I mean, right. we've, we've got the the boss cat oct octopus circle, uh, right. and it's you know it's a little thinner wire for the smaller shad, uh -huh. and whatnot. So it, it's it's you know it, I use it on the smaller shad because it's a little lighter wire. But right. the uh, the boss cat, the eight all, you know the red the red hooks like Jay's talking about, it's great hooks for shad anywhere from seven inches to twelve inches. You know it can handle all of it. So right. it just depends on how you want to use it. So, it's a uh, it's a one size fits all hook. You know, in a tight, you can use it on on anything and catch. You know, as small as a three pound flathead, all the way up to fifty, seventy pound flathead. You know, so it, it works out pretty good. Right. So we're not going to tease them and and take them to the end to give them tips. We're going to go right to it. So if you could give them a tip on catching big catfish, what would it be, Dustin? Uh, structure. Right. Structure. I mean that's. That's what we target. I mean, we, uh -huh. we try to find a hole, a deep hole that's got structure in it and throw right in the middle of it. Right. That's a lot of what we're going to be doing tomorrow. We're going to be scanning yep. and looking for structure. And How about you, Jay? If you had to give a tip to a guy that wants to go out there and catch a big catfish, what would it be? Oh. 
about the same thing, man. It's hard. It's hard to beat stuff like that. I mean, you get deep water, 20, 30 foot of water, any kind of structure in it. Flat has uh-huh. like cover. It doesn't even have to be a tree. You can get in rocks, ledges, shells, right? Um, just any anything of that nature. Um, How about you, Joe? If you had to give a tip, what would it be? Yeah, I'm I'm on their coattail with that. I mean, the structure, right. you know, you, you know, thirty foot, give or take. Uh, I think one thing I've learned uh, doing this is that having the right bait can make you look really good. You okay. work, you know, that's one thing that we all do right here is that we'll work our butt off to get the right bait. And if you get the right bait, then it can make you look really good. You know, that, that shad can put off a vibration. And it's almost like a dog smelling fear in a sense. I think it puts off something that can draw those fish out of that structure and make it attack that shad. Uh-huh. Uh, the flatheads and, and blue cats, bigger ones, of course, are territorial, so they will come out and, and kill a shad. So I think it helps, you know, you know, obviously fishing the structure and stuff like that, but also what we already do is catch that, that fresh live shad that morning of that we're going really? fishing to have it as fresh as can be, as frisky as can be, because a shad that's not shaking is not alive. Yeah. If he may be alive down there breathing, but if he ain't moving, he ain't he ain't live bait for us. So you have to go out there and throw your cast net. So you have uh, shad tanks in your boat then? Yep. I do. Yep. yep. And that's a challenge keep them alive, isn't it? Because it is a toasty 96 degrees yeah. tomorrow. How do, you, how do you keep them alive? you got a nice concoction that you have to make up in the water oh. to keep them alive. Um, salt. Uh, no foam, and I guess it's like an aloe, pretty much just a slime coat. coat. Yeah. Uh huh. You put that inside there. Keeps the yep. water kind of clean. We have a filter system that filters out everything. Yep. How big's your tank? You have a five gallon. 80? How big? The uh, bait tank's actually a 35 gallon. 35 gallon. Is it a seat style or not? You know, like they have seat styles down there at Texoma. That's what those guys like no, to it, use. It, it's a standalone. Oval. It's, it's an isolated tank. It just uh-huh. uh, basically has the the tank itself in a, in a round. You know, it's round, of course, and then it has right. a separate filtering system within the tank built in. So it's really a thirty-five gallon plus ten gallons, so forty-five gotcha. gallons. So you're yep. committing ten gallons to just you know cleaning the water. That's the you know one of the biggest things is right. having having as a circle. Having the oxygen in it and also filtering out all that ge- the gills, the slime, and everything else. And, right. You know, it's it sucks, but yeah. you know, at the same time, it's what do you want to get out of your fishing yeah. day? Do you want right. to work hard and catch fish, or do you just want to be lazy and, and just let them die and get red nosed? You plan on fishing all day. You got to keep them healthy all day. That's right. So you talked about fishing uh, structure. What do you use for electronics? How do you find your fish? Well, I. If you're asking me, I, I think they made you captain. I guess no, they no, slid no. this. I, 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 they slid I, I, this question over to you. Yeah. It kind of looked like they were looking at you. I think so. that, you know, I try to use a lot of analogies um, to help people understand. I think it's when you know you deer hunt for so long or turkey hunt for so long. You walk in the woods and there's not one thing that just pokes out to you. It's everything. It's it's uh-huh. the creek being right there. It's the hills being right here. It's the field being right there. It's kind of everything that kind of comes in to one thing and says, "I like that spot." You know, right. for us, it's the current, it's the depth, it's the structure, it's the isolated structure. If you've got a row of 500 y- yards of trees, how are you going to pick out that one fish? But if you've got an oak tree that's down there or whatever kind of tree it is, 60 or right. 70 foot long, it's isolated, there's somebody that lives there, and we're going to try to pull him out. So I think that you take everything that is, you know, within that area, and you say, is this a good area or not? Kind of like a hunter does, you know, hunting turkey or, or deer or something like that. I think that's what I do anyway. If right. You, if you're using your electronics to find that kind of stuff, don't be right. discouraged not seeing fish in there. Uh-huh. You're not always going to see the fish in there, especially flathead. Flatheads, are, like I said, with the structure, they're going to tuck up under something. They're going to lay right. against the lo- that. 100%. It, it's, it's not, it's not going to pick up the fish. Right. You just got to have confidence that he's there. Fish it, fish it like he is there. So fish you're it using like you did see him there. Down scan and side scan same time. Then yes. you're doing a lot of driving and looking first a before lot, you fish. A lot. A lot. The a day lot. before a tournament is a solid eight nine hours on the water, just uh-huh. riding, looking. Right before you drop spots. something down. Mm-hmm. Yep. And and another thing too that we we've, we've learned over the time is is that find those spots. Find it the day before. When you right. come to it the day of the tournament, shut your motor off, get your trolling motor out, and get to the bank. If you're going to tie it to the bank, right. turn that outboard off because they're right up under you. I mean, and 
you know, obviously it's your fishing structure. You you can't fish directly over it, but you gotta gotta be over it somewhat because you gotta get that dude out of there too. So you can't right. throw and cast seventy five, you know, yards or whatever how far it is away and expect to drag him through all them trees. You gotta kinda be over him. So You need to have your game plan the day before where that boat needs to be positioned with that structure before you get there on day two. That's it. You don't need to be guessing at it when you get there. You need to know exactly where you need to be. So get you as soon as you can. Cut, yep. cut everything off and start fishing. So you anchor? Most of the time you guys are anchoring? You just spot Is that right? Spot lock. Spot lock yeah. With your, like, with your... Control uh, the motor. Control the motor, yep. And holding your position. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about equipment. See that you got B&M. What are you using for rods to, to pull those big beasts out? 10-foot 10, 10 Silver Cat Magnums. It's a two-piece rod. Uh-huh. Uh, they've just made some upgrades to it. It's got solid metal, metal eyes on them now. That's all. It's got that soft tip when you see the initial bite, strong backbone, pickled in them big fish, man. It's, it's like they're hard to beat. What is, uh, what's it rated? Do you know what the line size rated? Does uh, it go up to like know. 50 maybe? Is, uh, what size line do you use in it? I use 80 pound braid. 80 pound braid? Yeah. It, it comes out of it just fine. Yep. Two piece. Mm -hmm. How tall is that rod? Do you ten, know? 10 foot. 10 foot? Mm -hmm. And you use all the same size rods at the same time? I do. Um, you do? Yeah, we, we I think the me and him both do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, with these guys, they're do, pr probably doing the same thing I am. You know, if you use that 10-foot rod, we're using bait that's kind of fragile. And uh -huh. so we can finesse that pole out there I and you. toss those baits. If we have a 7-foot rod, we have to sling it. Uh -huh. And so that tears the bait, kills the bait. So we can just toss it. It's, you know, with that leverage of a 10-foot rod and get it out there as far as we want to with minimal damage to the bait. Is a, is a big thing too. So. There you go. Let's let's brag about some of your big fish. What's the biggest fish you guys have caught in uh, in a tournament? What was your biggest fish and what was your heaviest weight? And also tell us the number of fish because I hear that they're starting to think about having three fish limit. Yeah, so. man, they already are. Um, oh, all right. Yeah. My biggest was thirty-eight point three. Wow. Well, so. so. Mine was 50. It was, yeah, it was certainly. <laughs> <laughs> 50 what? 58 50, something. 59. 58. I'm going to go 59. 59. Yeah, All right. Yeah, 59. You round up. Uh, I'm somewhere, I, I don't know, 60. I don't know. 60? Yeah, somewhere, give or take, somewhere right in there. Wow. Right, we're, uh, just, we're just going to skip over the state record? or we just, yeah. Oh, uh, so you have a state up. record? He did. I, uh, <laughs> is that Mississippi? What yeah. state's that in? It was uh, Mississippi, 77 pounds, and now it's 77.7. So had it for right. about three or four, three, three and a half years or whatnot. And uh, uh, Matt Bingham. Uh, out of Memphis, uh, caught one on the Mississippi River that was 77.7. So, good fish. Yeah, it don't matter if that's I had a good fish. Three minutes, three uh, three years, or three decades. I still <laughs> still was lucky enough to get it on a Tom Bigby. So, that's a miracle in itself. Yeah, Tom Bigby, Big really? Tom, absolutely. Yeah. That's Hey, that's the, that's where, the one that scratches Where at in the Tom Bigby did you catch that, in general? <sighs> so, uh, I know I put you right on it. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been back there a thousand times trying to call it back up. Uh, right there on the old river run below uh -huh. Columbus, uh, oh. down at, they did a lot of work. It's kind of like a visitor's, uh, deal now that, I mean, a lot of people come and walk the track over there. So about, uh, about a half mile below there where the trussle in between the trussles right there. Really? Yeah. So it's, it was actually, uh, only about a half mile from my brother's house. And, uh, it was, a it was a, a fit to get him in cause I didn't have a net or anything. And I wow. knew if I didn't get him in, nobody would believe me. Right. We sit right here. So he caught, he was, let's go back to talk about the Tom Big. You caught that on Tom Big? I ain't believing that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. If you don't bring him in, they ain't going to believe it. I promise you. Uh, uh, that ain't no way. So, I almost want to know how you got him in. Did you actually just reach your arm down in there and, I and had just to. bring him in? Yeah. So Fall I, backwards? It's, it's exactly what I did. I had a pontoon <laughs> boat and I opened the back door and I thought, man, his mouth was as big as a paper plate wide. You know, wow. I was sitting there. Like, I was like, I've never seen a fish this big. And you look at his fins, and his fins were as big as a paper plate. And I was like, if I don't get him in, ain't nobody going to believe me. I mean, that's just <laughs> all there was to it. So I was sitting there thinking, I was like, man, you know, I knew that a blue cat would tear me up that size, but I knew that he would go side to side. A blue cat usually grabs you and rolls. Right. But I thought he'd go side to side and just one motion, just adrenaline pumping and everything, just reach inside there and pulled up as hard as I could and slid him up my body. Uh, just fell backwards and got right. him in, and it was just, man. You ever seen Ric Flair get 
get carried away on the boat. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was, you know, I'm the only one out there. I, I know that people's out in their yard like, what in the world is that noise over there? And I'm just, you know, break dancing and everything else in the boat. So I was by myself, but luckily it worked out. So, um, yeah, uh, very, uh, very much surprised to have him on the boat with me. So I yeah. haven't had anything uh, necessarily close to that since on that river. Right. So, uh, so you guys uh, fish the team things, right, together. Right. And so what was, what's was what been like your biggest weight, your total team weight? Oh, 990, what is it, 91, 92 pounds? 91, 92 yeah. pounds yeah. for it's how many fish? This is our first year fishing together. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we fished about five or six tournaments so far. For three um, fish. I think that was a five fish. Yeah, it was, it was, it was five yeah. fish. Uh, down there. Oh, five, yeah, yeah, yeah. 93 yeah, yeah. something, yeah, I think. That's right. And tell them, it's not like you're just wearing the biggest ones. You also have have to have one that's smaller, don't you? Yeah, well, that that's tournament right. was in Alabama, and Alabama's got a 34-inch rule. We uh-huh. only have one per fishman over 34 inches, and everything else has to be under that. I got gotcha. you. So, just so you had one big one. Mm-hmm. You had one really it nice one. His, his big That was my that Oh, was my that was your one. biggest? Yeah, yeah. And what do you've had? Uh, uh, yeah. I, me and Jay's fished some that I think that we had over 200 – 40 pounds over in, uh, on the Coosa River, actually, in Silicon. Really? Now, yeah, we, we caught some good fi- – I don't really like to talk about it a whole lot because part two <laughs> part of that two. story was me holding on to a trolling motor and, and a rod at the same time and a fish strip and drag and me not having a chance at all to get him in. It was the oh. biggest fish I ever lost in my that's, life. That's something else you can't explain to people what happened wow. that day. Yeah, it, it, that's uh, – so we caught some really good fish and, and actually uh, – we got in a bad predicament. We didn't have any current. It was 45 foot deep. We wanted to present baits to this log that we seen down there that we caught a 15 pound blue cat and wanted to coil up some fish. Right. And next thing we know, we pull out 150 pounds of flatheads. You know, just random. You know, we had to coil some of them, of course, right. and stuff like that. But just we we I think we slapped like seven flathead right there that was just good size flathead. Jay got one that was fifty plus in there that chummed up the live well about three or four times and wow monster fish. I mean it was it was great. But we've uh, we've had several that we've got in the one twenty one thirty for five fish in a right. in a tournament day. So it's it's not always like that, but you certainly appreciate it when it is. That's right. Well, that's pretty awesome. That takes us up to Tackle Time. Tackle Time is sponsored by Pico Lures. Pico Lures has a complete line of hard and soft baits. You can check them out at picolures.com. Uh, so if they wanted to find out more about you guys, we'll just, Dustin, you're lucky enough. You get to sit here. Uh, uh, tell them where would they go to the Facebook page, social media uh, for you? We have a Facebook page and uh-huh. a TikTok at G Squared Fishing. Uh, G, okay. so G underscored fishing. Um, that's mainly what we deal with is TikToks and on Facebook. Okay. And? That's the same thing. I share same? Facebook. So it's right. G squared Facebook page with Dustin. You find us both right. at our personal page as well. And? No, I, I, every now and then you'll see me get something on live bait catfishing. Uh, when I do get out there, I don't get out there as much as these guys do anymore. So, right. Uh, but, yeah, every now and then you'll see me throw a, a video on there. There you go. So there you have it. What a what a great show. We're going to find out some more. I'm excited to go fishing with these guys and uh, learn some more of their uh, secrets. And uh, and I'll be sharing them because I'm writing an article for uh, Catfish Now on how to use your electronics to uh, catch big, big flatheads. So uh, we're going to get some insight on that. And you'll be able to check that out online at, uh, at uh, Catfish Now. Um, otherwise, uh, that pretty much does it. Appreciate you guys being on the show, and like I always like to end the show, make sure you keep your hooks sharp and your lures in the water.